Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at first ionization energy. We're going to talk about what the first ionization energy of an element is, factors that determine first ionization energies, look at the general trend in first ionization energies down a group and across a period in the periodic table, and explain the exceptions to the general trend across a period for group three and group six elements. Atomic orbitals and electron configurations have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about first ionization energy, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Inside an atom, there is a very small, dense region of positive charge made up of protons and neutrons called the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by negatively charged electrons that exist in atomic orbitals within specific energy levels or shells, labelled as principal quantum numbers, starting with the number 1 for the energy level closest to the nucleus. Atomic orbitals are regions of space where, if occupied, there is a 90% probability of finding an electron. Each atomic orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, one pair. Electrons are negatively charged and repel each other, meaning only a limited number of orbitals can fit around a nucleus in a given energy level. Electrons that are in energy levels closer to the nucleus are lower in energy and more stable than electrons in energy levels further from the nucleus. As a result, orbitals in the first energy level, n equals 1, will fill or be occupied with electrons before orbitals in the second energy level, n equals 2 and orbitals in this energy level will be occupied before orbitals in the third energy level, n equals 3. Electron configurations are used to show the energy levels and subshells that are occupied within an atom. They are written in a repeating sequence with a number, lowercase letter and superscript number. The first number represents the energy level, the lowercase letter the subshell, and the superscript number the total number of electrons in the subshell. Recap done, let's go! First ionization energy is the minimum amount of energy required to remove one mole's worth of electrons from one mole's worth of gaseous atoms of an element to form one mole's worth of gaseous ions with a charge of 1+. This can kind of be thought of as a measure of how hard it is to remove an electron from an atom. A high first ionization energy means lots of energy is needed to remove an electron, whereas a low first ionization energy means only a small amount of energy is needed. For example, the first ionization energy of sodium is 496 kilojoules per mole whereas the first ionization energy of argon is 1,521 kilojoules per mole. The higher first ionization energy of argon shows us that it is much harder to remove an electron from an atom of argon than it is to remove an electron from an atom of sodium. When measuring first ionization energies, atoms have to be in gaseous state to ensure that they are free and there is no interaction with other atoms, such as through bonding, as any interactions would affect the energy needed to remove an electron from them, meaning the values measured wouldn't be based solely on the atomic structure of the atom. We measure in terms of moles as it simply isn't realistic to measure the energy needed to remove only one electron from one atom. Instead, we take an average value for a mole's worth of atoms. The amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom is based on the attraction between the outermost electron of the atom and the atom's nucleus, with electrons being negatively charged and the nucleus positively charged due to the protons inside it. The strength of this attraction is based on two things, the size of the charges involved and the distance between them. Well, the size of the charge of an electron is always the same, relative negative 1, meaning it is the size of the positive charge of the nucleus and the distance an electron is from the nucleus that determines the attraction strength between them. 
The greater the positive charge of the nucleus, the stronger the attraction, and the shorter the distance between the nucleus and electron, the stronger the attraction as well. This means the closer an electron is to the nucleus, the harder it is to pull it away. The further away an electron is from the nucleus, the easier it is to pull it away. It's a bit like having two bar magnets. The further apart they are, the easier it is to pull one away from the other. The closer together they are, the harder it is to pull one away from the other, meaning more energy is required. There is a balance between the impact of the size of the positive charge from the nucleus and the distance an electron is from the nucleus. For example, sodium has 11 protons in its nucleus, giving it an 11 plus charge and two inner electron shells, meaning the outermost electron is in a 3s orbital. Potassium, however, has 19 protons in its nucleus, giving it a 19 plus charge, but three inner electron shells, meaning the outermost electron is in a 4s orbital, much further away from the nucleus than for sodium. As a result, potassium has a lower first ionization energy, 419 kilojoules per mole, than sodium, 496. As even though it has a greater positive charge from the nucleus, the increased distance between the nucleus and outermost electron gives a lower strength of attraction, making it easier to remove the outermost electron. Because of this, as you go down a group in the periodic table, the first ionization energies of the elements decrease. The inner electrons in an atom block or shield the positive charge of a nucleus from the outer electrons. This is referred to as inner electron shielding. As outer electrons get attracted to the nucleus and are pulled in tighter towards it, they start to get repelled by inner electrons. This repulsion reduces the overall attraction force between the outer electrons and the nucleus. The greater the level of inner electron shielding within an atom, the weaker the force of attraction between the outer electrons and the nucleus, making it easier to remove an electron from the atom. As elements below each other in a group have more inner electron shells than the elements above, the level of inner electron shielding is greater, meaning outer electrons are further from the nucleus and experience a weaker attraction to it. As a result, it is easier to remove these electrons from the atom and the first ionization energy decreases. For example, down group one with the alkali metals, we can see how as the atoms get larger, their first ionization energies decrease. With sodium having a lower first ionization energy, 496 kilojoules per mole, than lithium, 519. And potassium has a lower first ionization energy, 419, than both of them. It is important to point out that the positive charge of the nucleus does also increase down a group, which does cause greater attraction between electrons in the atom and the atom's nucleus. However, the increased level of inner electron shielding has a bigger effect on the attraction the outer electrons experience, meaning the increased positive charge of the nucleus is offset by the increased distance the outer electrons are from it. This isn't the case, however, when we move across a period. As you go across a period in the periodic table, first ionization energy increases as a trend. This is because across a period, atomic number increases, meaning more protons and positive charge in the nucleus, whilst the level of inner electron shielding stays the same, as all elements in the same period have the same number of inner electron shells. As a result, the outermost electrons experience a greater attraction to the nucleus and are pulled in tighter to it, decreasing the atomic radius of the atom. The decreased atomic radius means less distance between the outermost electron and the nucleus, increasing the strength of attraction between them and making it harder to remove the electron, therefore increasing the first ionization energy. 
For example, across period 3, sodium we've seen has a first ionization energy of 496 kilojoules per mole, magnesium 738, aluminium 578, silicon 789, phosphorus 1012, sulfur 1000, chlorine 1251, and argon 1521. A clear trend showing an increase in first ionization energy. All these elements have the same number of inner electron shells, two, meaning they all experience the same level of inner electron shielding, whilst at the same time, moving from left to right, the positive charge of the nucleus increases, causing greater attraction between the outermost electrons and the nucleus, decreasing the atomic radius and making it harder to remove the outermost electron. Notice that I've been careful to say that first ionization energy increases as a trend across a period. If we look at the first ionization energies of elements in a period in a graph, we always see two exceptions to this general trend, elements in group 3 and group 6. Moving from group 2 to group 3 leads to a decrease in first ionization energy. This is because for group 3 elements, the extra added electron has to go into a new P subshell that is higher in energy than the S subshell the outer electron in the group 2 element is in. This means the outermost electron for the group 3 element is at a higher energy than for the group 2 element and is easier to remove as a result, given a lower first ionization energy. The added proton and positive charge in the nucleus doesn't quite give enough extra attraction to override the increased distance and energy gap between the S and P subshells. For example, when we look at the first ionization energy of aluminium, 578 kilojoules per mole, compared to magnesium, 738, we can see that there is a surprising drop between the group 2 to group 3 element. The electron configuration for magnesium with its 12 electrons is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, whereas for aluminium with its 13 electrons it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1, with that added electron for the aluminium going into the 3p subshell, which is a higher energy than the 3s subshell the outermost electron in magnesium exists in. The increase in positive charge of the nucleus from 12 plus to 13 plus just isn't quite enough to overcome the increased energy from the 3s to the 3p subshell. And as a result, the strength of attraction is weaker and the electron more easily removed, given a lower first ionization energy. There is also a decrease in first ionization energy moving from group 5 to group 6. This is actually because for the group 6 element, the added electron has to go into a half-filled orbital in the P subshell, leading to repulsion. This repulsion increases the energy of the electron pair in the orbital and makes them slightly less stable, meaning less energy is needed to remove one of them from the atom given a lower first ionization energy. Just as before, the increase in positive charge of 1 plus from the nucleus isn't quite enough to overcome this effect of repulsion, and first ionization energy decreases as a result. For example, across period 3, as we've seen, phosphorus is in group 5 and has a first ionization energy of 1012 kilojoules per mole and sulfur is in group 6 and has a first ionization energy of 1000 kilojoules per mole. The electron configuration for phosphorus is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3, and for sulfur it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. The extra electron that sulfur has has to go into an already half-filled p orbital. The two negatively charged electrons will repel slightly and this causes repulsion and increases their energy, making them slightly less stable and it's therefore easier to remove one of these electrons compared to an outer electron from phosphorus. Although there is again repulsion for a group 7 element, 
such as chlorine when another electron gets added, the positive charge increase in the nucleus increases the attraction between the nucleus and outer electrons enough to offset this repulsion and the first ionization energy increases again. So to summarize, first ionization energy is the minimum amount of energy required to remove one mole's worth of electrons from one mole's worth of gaseous atoms of an element forming one mole's worth of gaseous ions with a charge of one plus. First ionization energy is based on electrostatic attraction between the outermost electron of an atom and its positively charged nucleus. There are two main factors that determine the strength of this attraction, the size of the positive charge of the nucleus and the distance the outermost electron is from the nucleus. The greater the positive charge of the nucleus, the stronger the attraction, and the shorter the distance between the nucleus and outer electron, the stronger the attraction as well. The first ionization energies of elements decrease as you go down a group in the periodic table. This is because the outermost electrons get further from the nucleus and experience less attraction to it due to increased levels of inner electron shielding. This means it gets easier to remove the outermost electron from an atom as you go down a group, leading to lower first ionization energies. As a trend, the first ionization energies of elements increase as you go across a period in the periodic table. This is because the level of inner electron shielding remains the same whilst the number of protons in the nucleus, and so its positive charge, increases. As a result, outer electrons experience a greater strength of attraction to the nucleus and are pulled tighter to it, leading to a decreased atomic radius and making it harder to remove them from the atom, giving a higher first ionization energy. There are two exceptions to the general trend across a period, moving from group two elements to group three elements and moving from group five elements to group six elements. Group 3 elements have their outermost electron in a p-subshell which is at a higher energy than the outermost electron in an s-subshell for a group 2 element in the same period. Being higher in energy and slightly less stable makes it slightly easier to remove, leading to a decrease in first ionization energy. Here, the increased positive charge from the extra proton doesn't quite override the effect of the increased energy of the p-orbital. Group 6 elements have their outermost electron in a filled p orbital in the p subshell. This is at a higher energy than the outermost electrons in a group 5 element where there are three electrons each in half filled p orbitals in the p subshell. Adding an extra electron to a half filled orbital leads to repulsion and increases the energy of the electrons in it making it easier to remove one of them and given a lower first ionization energy. Here, the increased positive charge from the extra proton again doesn't quite override this effect that's being caused by the spin pair repulsion. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.